But some big news out of college football today, which is going to affect yet another conference. Good and bad news, depending on how you look at it. The good news comes for the Pac-12, as there is a report out there right now from Brett McMurphy that says that four schools are set to announce later today that they will depart the Mountain West. That's the bad news. The good news is the Pac-12 stays alive. So it depends on how you want to look at this. Boise State, Colorado State, San Diego State, and Fresno State will begin the 2026-27 season in the Pac-12. They would join Oregon State and Washington State, who are the only two schools left in the Big 12. Now, there's a flip side to the story. That, of course, is the Mountain West. And Gloria Navarez, who is the Mountain West commissioner, has her own thoughts on this uh, development today. Here's what she had to say. All members will be held to the conference bylaws and policies should they elect to depart. The requirements of the scheduling agreement will apply to the Pac-12 should they admit the Mountain West members. Our board of directors is meeting to determine the next steps. The Mountain West has a proud 25-year history and will continue to thrive in the year ahead. Now, there is an exit fee, folks, for each of these schools leaving, and this is a key number here because the Pac-12 probably going to have to pick up the dime here, $18 million with two years' notice. So will the schools pay this? Will the Pac-12 end up paying this? I mean, they have the money to do it, but needless to say, that's the next part of the story that we'll need to unpack before they move forward. All right, now to the NFL and the story in the National Football League still surrounding Tyree Kill, who met with the media yesterday calling for the firing of one of the police officers that was involved in his detainment before their game this past Sunday against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Needless to say, he continues to discuss it and is not quite yet uh, ready to move on, understandably so, a very emotional time for him. Here's what he said meeting with the media yesterday about the police officer. Your lawyer has come out and said that he's looking for the dismissal of the officer. Do you, what does that mean? No. So you want the officer to be gone. 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 He got to go, man. Because in that instant right there, like not only did he do treat me bad, you know what I'm saying? He also treated my teammates with, you know, disrespect. You know, he had some crazy words towards them, and they ain't even do nothing. Like, what did they do to you? They just walking on the sidewalk. So, I don't know, bro. Like, he 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 got to go, man. Like, I it's not too many times that cheaters say people got to go, but you, ow, what they say on Wild and Out, gone. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. No comprende. You knew I was going to say something crazy. Yeah, we, we did know that uh, something crazy would be said, and that was Tyreek Hill yesterday. Not a surprise there. All right, Hill is expected to suit up tonight, of course. The Dolphins will play the Bills. The uh, odds right now, Miami minus 2.5. Buffalo has dominated Miami. In fact, Josh Allen's never lost on Thursday Night Football. 6-0 and as they're on the road tonight. Total 48.5. Some rain expected for the early part of this game. Right now, it appears the Dolphins are very depleted at running back. Raheem Mostert is out of this game. We'll hear from Dr. Chow coming up on his injury in the Sports Grid sound off. Meanwhile, Devon A. Chain practiced. Looks like he's going to give it a shot tonight. If he can't go, you have Jalen Wright. You have Jeff Wilson Jr. So we'll keep an eye on who plays at running back for Miami. And warm-ups will be critical tonight around 6.30, 7 o'clock Eastern. The National Football League ratings just keep on getting stronger. They set another record. The NFL averaged 21 million viewers per game. It was the most watched week one on record. The league and Nielsen ratings said that per game average on TV was up 12%. All told, 123 million people saw at least part of one game. That's the highest since 2019. Joe Burrow supposedly has some sort of wrist injury. Kind of funny that he was talking about this yesterday. I don't know if we saw this press conference. But he said it's not affecting his throws. And Burrow said that he's just fine. Meanwhile, the Browns put David Njoku on injured reserve, so he's going to miss four games. 
Juan Thornhill is also going to be out four games as well. They put them both on injured reserve yesterday. Uh, meanwhile, Baltimore Ravens linebacker, how about this? Kyle Van Noy ripped into the Chiefs medical staff for a lack of urgency after he suffered an eye injury in Thursday's game, calling it unacceptable and unprofessional. Professional. The Chiefs had no comment on the issue. Sharon Moore of the Michigan Wolverines has finally finalized his contract. Of course, this was going back and forth all offseason. Now it's a completed deal with the Wolverines. I know that's a little bit surprising. That's kind of the way that it's gone. He had signed a contract after coaching the first two games of the season without one. Reggie Bush, how about this? An attempted break-in in his home in Encino, California. He says everyone is safe in a text message, but the L.A. Police Department said that someone broke a glass in his house, glass window, tried to break in, steal Reggie Bush's stuff. Tonight in college football, there is a game as well. Texas State minus one and a half against Arizona State, total of 60 and a half. And by the way, really good story coming out yesterday from Michigan State and Boston College coming up on September 21st. They're going to honor a hero from the tragedy on 9-11. That's coming up next weekend. Now, as I mentioned, in Major League Baseball, get ready for history because, folks, it appears to be coming even faster than we thought. Shohei Otani last night stole his 48th base, and he also hit his 47th home run. No one in the history of baseball has ever gone 50-50. Otani plays over the next several days. I believe it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. If he doesn't do it then, he's off Monday. And then uh, Otani's here in South Florida playing the Marlins for a few games. So we'll see if that ends up happening in my backyard. The Mets beat the Jays late, almost a no-hitter for Toronto. And then all of a sudden the game broke out. Total for the game was seven and a half. Francisco Lindor hit a home run. Mets score six runs in the top of the ninth inning. Poor Blue Jays can't get out of their own way this season. Uh, Francis Bowden, he's been pitching great for Toronto. But uh, no no no-hitter, no win, and the team even lost in the game yesterday. All right, back to the American League East update we go. Jazz Chisholm Jr. ends up beating the Royals on a a walk-off, fielder's choice in extra innings. And Tyler O'Neill hits a home run for the Red Sox to beat the Orioles. So now the Yankees are back to one-and-a-half game lead in the American League East. And also Tampa Bay Rays relief pitcher Edwin Uceta, who hit Nick Castellanos a couple of days ago, has been suspended three games by Major League Baseball for hitting him. And Kevin Cash, the manager of the Rays, also suspended one game, although he will appeal it. Let's get to some sports betting revenue numbers. How about Maine? We'll start off there. They have two legal sports books, DraftKings and Caesars. And sports revenue in terms of the money that they're making in the sports book, how about this? Drops 40%. Very uncharacteristic. Although in the summer, you would expect these numbers to dip, maybe not as much. Asia Wilson broke the WNBA season scoring record 86 to 75. Pull up jumper, 26 seconds left in the game. 941 points this season. She breaks the record held by Jewel Lloyd. And Aaliyah Edwards had 15 points and 10 rebounds as the Mystics continue their playoff push. They blew out the Chicago Sky. The final score in that game, 89-58. to Welcome back to Newswire here on Sports Grid. There's a uh, funny line from a television show called Seinfeld back in the day. Uh, where one of the characters says, just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. But in this case, as we bring in Pat Evans, as it comes to sports betting in the state of Missouri, just when I thought we were in, they pull me back out. I mean, come on, Pat, what is going on here? Is this going to be on the ballot in November? Is it not going to be on the ballot? I just got done talking to somebody the other day about this. They said, you know, sports betting going to be legal anywhere else in the United States this year. I'm like, maybe Missouri. What's going on here, man? (laughs) Well, first of all, I, I mean, I'm really excited to talk about Missouri, but I really want you to have a segment soon to fully discuss, you know, the geographic similarities between Miami and, and New York. I really need oh, a full yeah. segment on that. So please oh, schedule yeah. that in. Um, but as for Missouri, I, you know, it is going to be on the ballot. We know this. We know that much. The ballot was finalized on Tuesday um, by the Secretary of State, and, and it's, it's going to be on the, the ballot. So, you know, we know that. Uh, this opposition, though, is not surprising. I think, you know, we've talked about this throughout the summer, really, as the ballot petition was getting underway and getting the signatures, getting the signatures turned in, the certification. You know, we we were told there was going to be some opposition at some point. That, of course, started with a lawsuit uh, at the end of last month um, challenging the certification process. You know, I, I think we talked about it earlier this week. I watched a whole, uh, you know, couple seven hours of the a very boring law and order esque situation where we were bet, you know, talking to signature experts and everything. And it turns out the judge ruled with the secretary of state said, you know, the certification process was, was all good. It's fine. It's okay. 
Um, but as that ruling comes through, now there's a campaign that has popped up uh, to oppose uh, the sports betting ballot initiative. And we don't know much about it, just like we don't know much about behind who was behind the lawsuit. Uh, it's just some political operatives in the state. Um, we're trying to dig and, and see some what we can find uh, who's going to be against uh, this opposition. They said it's a huge they're going to bring together a huge coalition of people to oppose it. So we know that their issue uh, in a, on the website they have is all about the language and how it was written behind closed doors by out of state companies and, and the professional sports teams with loopholes and, and all that. And it won't actually bring any money to uh, Missouri and to fund education. And we'll see uh, if that's, you know, you know, we know that there's support 50% in the latest poll four and 21% undecided. So it seems like it's a sure bet to pass at this point. Uh, again, we'll have to watch it really closely on, on election day. That's the election I'll be watching, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, opposition, we'll see opposition ads. Speaking of ads, winning for Missouri education, the coalition that put this on the ballot uh, released their first ad with a Missouri teacher and mom talking about the benefits of, of how the tax money will go to the education in the state. So, you know, it's going to be one of those political ad battles in Missouri. You know, you see plenty of ads, political ads this time of year, and uh, that's they're just going to add to it. Yeah. And look, well, at least it's on the ballot. So we get to take that step forward and the opposition. We'll see how much they have to do with whether or not people vote yes or no. OK, now, one discussion that has been very prominent in sports betting is in order to solve some of the problem gambling is to limit sports bettors. Now, naturally, the books don't want to do this, but it may be in the best interest of some people to know when it is too much to bet. What's going on here in Massachusetts? This is sort of surrounding a discussion in a roundtable to talk about whether or not they can implement this. Well, so what's happened in Massachusetts is the regulators, it's a very, you know, we talk about it all the time on this show, whether it's me or, or Mike or Jim or whoever was covering it at the time. Uh, they started talking about this at the beginning of the year, really. They, they said they've been receiving complaints from betters saying they're being limited and they don't know why. And, and they, they want to get to the bottom of it. They want some transparency. They want data from the operators. They want to know, you know, how these limits are set and, and, and all that. Well, their first meeting, I think it was in May, uh, only one operator showed up, Bally's, uh, and the rest of the operators in the state didn't show up. They had said they wanted to take part, but they wanted it to be operators only, and there was a lot of privileged information that they wouldn't want to share widely. And, um, you know, so that happened, uh, and there was just mostly industry people saying, uh, you know, industry adjacent people talking about it, uh, and but no real operator input. So then months go by, and now we're here we are yesterday. The Massachusetts Gaming Commission met for about three hours. First half was all eight operators in the state, including FanDuel, DraftKings, Caesars, BetMGM. Uh, and then the second half was, uh, again, industry-adjacent people talking about the, the issues of, of limiting. Um, and really, it, it was pretty insightful from the operator point of view. I mean, they they again they kept some things back but they tried to open up they said it's a very small number of people who are limited and it's really through a, a long review process of uh, better behavior and, and things like that that they kind of look at before they limit a uh, fanduel said in 2023 it was less than one percent of all bets uh in massachusetts reached the user limit whatever the specific limit is so it's again a very small portion the gaming commission said you know they want more transparency they're trying to work with it they want to make sure betters uh casual betters uh because a lot of the operators are talking about how it's operators that are take advantages against the sports books and they find that behavior and a lot of them said that it was it was often losing betters uh were or at the time they were limited they were still loser betters they just figured it out from um the behavior uh Again, it's going to be a lengthy discussion at this point to see where we're at um, or what the Massachusetts Gaming Commission will do. Again, they just want to protect the casual better who might get caught up in this. Um, and again, it's probably a very small amount of people, but they want to make sure it's not happening and pushing them to the offshore market. That's something uh, they said was very important to them was keeping mm. keeping the uh, transition to the open regulated market uh, 
strong. And so we'll see what happens. Uh, I assume there's going to be another discussion because the the Jordan Maynard, the interim chair, said, you know, this is going to be a long discussion, something they got to think right. carefully about and deliberate carefully. So we'll see. Uh, it is certainly something you see a lot of on on sports betting Twitter is, is the, you know, people saying they've been limited or, or being upset that they're limited. And so Massachusetts has been a trendsetter in a lot of ways tackling s- subjects like this. So we'll see uh, what they do, if they do anything and, and see, you know, um, if other states follow suit. Yeah. Max bets conversation, something that could be a big story in 2025 as we move forward. All right. The numbers are in from betting on the Olympics and lo and behold, here we go again. People are doing same game parlays at the Olympics. I mean, tell me this isn't true, Pat. Tell me it ain't true. <laughs> no, apparently it was, it was so FanDuel released their report on, on t- the Paris Olympics betting and, and it was up five times the amount, uh, as uh, Tokyo in 2021, uh, that's pretty significant, I would think. But I think that's kind of an overall trend in general. I mean, how much more did I watch? How much more did you watch, Craig, of the Olympics this year than the one four years, three years ago, however the timeline works out now? Um, it was a lot. You know, I watched a lot of the Olympics this year, and I I didn't in 2021. So it'll be kind of, it kind of goes hand in hand with that. To your point, the parlays were up a huge amount. Um, They said it was specifically around basketball, especially, which isn't a big surprise with how fun it was to watch that Olympic team and Steph Curry finish that gold medal game. So I'm not surprised. uh, And we'll see how much more it grows uh, in the next Olympus Olympics, especially with it being in, in the U.S. Yeah. Olympics, and by the way, yeah. And, and by that time, maybe the state of California has sports betting as a possibility. I, <laughs> that that could be. I mean, yeah, it could be four years from now. 